are back at it again with our driving across series. Today we are driving across Minmus. I know it was supposed to be Eve. You guys voted on Eve, but uh, it's been a struggle. Whoopsies. Anyway, as I was saying, Eve has been a bit of a struggle. Uh, I kept landing in the water with the graphics mods. It makes it impossible to see where I'm landing. So uh, it will still happen. You guys voted for it. So it will be the next planet we drive across. To. Uh, but for the time being, I'm filling in the, the gaps with moons and so forth. So really quickly, for the people that are new here, the Driving Across series is where I land on either the north or south pole of a moon and or planet. And I drive from that pole to the other pole. So if I land on the North Pole, I drive to the South Pole um, and try to see some cool things on the way and have some fun. Uh, so if you're into that sort of thing, stick around. If not, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? The title says I'm driving across. Anyway, we're making our way to Minmus. It's pretty, pretty easy in my opinion, especially with maneuver nodes, they save the day. So here's our truck reveal. Boom. I know I said in the last video, the Duna video, that we only are driving our truck that uh, we've driven a few times now. For the rest of these, we are going to be using this truck. No ifs, ands, or buts, this truck will drive across every planet. But I was inspired by a Reddit post. Someone made it a Formula One car and was flying across the ground, and I thought, wow, I want to do that on Minmus. But you know, I can't, I can't make a car, so I made a sick truck, because I love my trucks. But anyway, here we are. We landed at the North Pole, so we're making our way to the South Pole. I start just heading in a random direction at first. Um, and then I decide to stop here. Um, the brakes don't work, no brakes on Minmus, so I had to turn on our engine and spin around until we could stop. It worked pretty well. Um, but really quickly, I got on Google and found out where the single monolith is on Minmus. So there's actually two. There's the green one that spawns randomly, and then the one monolith. And I wanted to make sure I hit the one monolith, so that is where we are headed. Uh, unfortunately, just based on where the monolith is, we don't get to see any of the cool lakes which is a little bit of a shame, but uh, we have a blast, so it's okay. So here's where I start headed, heading in the right direction toward that monolith. So because there's very low gravity, I set out to just have as much fun as I could with being airborne. So you'll see in some of the <laughs> clips, I uh, do some sweet uh, aileron rolls and barrel rolls and some uh, cool back flips and front flips. There's a whole lot of fun. If, you, if you're into cool tricks and you like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but you, you can't afford Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but you have Kerbal Space Program instead, boom. Go to Minmus. <laughs> Get those sick points. Um, I'm not quite sure how long of a drive this was. It was not very long, like so much so that I, I didn't even care that it took how long it took. Um, I'll do the math at the end and we'll, we'll let you know. At the time of this voice recording, I have no idea how long it took. But here we are at the monolith. Uh, we're getting Megstead out. Megstead was our Kerbal that drove to the South Pole on Kerbin, so she's back at it again in Minmus. Uh, I figured it'd be safe. It'd be a safe place to send her again because it, there's no doubt in my mind that we'd be able to rescue these Kerbins. Oh, Kerbins? These Kerbals. Um, you can see our truck kind of running away there, so we gotta catch up to it real quick. No biggie. The brakes are on, so it was just slow. Slowly rolling away. So we got Megstead Kerman and Luden? Luden Kerman? 
Luden. Yeah, we'll, we'll say Luden. Um, and we are heading off. So this monolith is about the halfway point, roughly, of the drive to the South Pole. So we're making very good progress already. We have some fuel, as you can see, I've used about half of it. Uh, and I used it for just getting back up to speed every time I stopped a quick save and whatnot. Um, when we first landed, we dropped off a, uh, a fuel tank that had a docking port on it. My initial goal was to drive all the way back and connect up to that to refuel to get us home, but I tried that several times. Woo! Almost hit that rock. I tried that several times, and I just kept crashing, and it was getting very frustrated. So I, uh, you'll see what we do. I don't want to spoil it. But in the end, it worked out. We had a blast. So here we're having London Kerman. London? Luden. Luden Kerman get out and get to the very south pole as you can see well you can't really see i don't really give you much opportunity to see can do i <laughs> but uh there's a little like weird graphic thing on the south pole where you can tell exactly where the pole is so that is where we land um just to give us a little target to aim for make it a little easier on ourselves there we go so you can see the little green square there we have about 50 kilometers until we've hit the South Pole. And like I said, this was a very... Over here's us jumping over the rock. <laughs> Doing a couple flips. Getting those style points. We take a little bit of damage. We, we blow off the front like nose cone fuel tank. And you can see uh, the trucks look a little wonky. Uh, nothing that a quick reload couldn't fix. Not a revert, but like, uh, I went to the tracking station and came back and that fixed the weird physics. Uh, obviously didn't fix the part I broke off, but, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, driving on Minimus, even though we're only going uh, right now 40 meters a second, any small bump felt like you were going to get sent off into orbit. Uh, there's a few times where I used my engines while I was in midair to slow me down, just so I could not crash. Um, and we, we did pretty well. We didn't lose, we just lost that one part, I think, this whole trip, compared to the mission across Kerbin, where that truck lost like 50% of its stuff, I think. But anyway, here we are, already at the South Pole. Literally, what, we're, we're eight minutes in? Hold on a minute, there's 20 minutes of this video, what the heck? Here we go, getting London Kerman. Luden. Luden Kerman. I don't know why I keep calling him. I'm just going to call him London Kerman if that's easier. Getting London Kerman in, and we are sending off a refueling ship. Uh, no Kerbals in this because I didn't have any more seats to bring them back home, so this is just a probe, basically. Uh, basically the same thing we used to get the boys, well not boys, sorry, Luden and Megstead to Minmus. Same ship, just uh, with a little bit different of a payload, obviously. There's not a truck in there. Um, and I very embarrassingly could not land where I wanted to land. Like, you see me remaking maneuver nodes, going back into, I don't know, it was just a mess. It was a mess trying to land. But ultimately, we do, and our engines are what we're resting on. Our little landing gear could barely reach, but it's fine. We didn't need that engine anyway if it blew up. You know, whatever. So we're getting the truck over there to refuel. It has a little docking port junior on the back of it. So we back on in using some cool parts to make it so we can adjust where that dock port is and then backing up into that. And the landing legs are in the way. Uh, something I did not test as always. I don't test anything, but we easily fix that by putting the landing gear up, backing up in. 
and then transferring as much fuel into this as we can, which we sent too much fuel, which is fine. We'd rather have too much than not enough. So here we go, refueled, we undock. I guess that's there if we ever want to go back. We're full on fuel, so we're driving this puppy back. And when I say driving, I mean driving. We are... <laughs> We're just kind of scooting along, getting into a orbit. Um, I wasn't really paying much attention while doing this, and I got in this crazy orbit. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, we have plenty of fuel. And then we're circular... circularizing. I cannot say that word unless I think about it. Circularizing, we're in a weird orbit, but that's fine. Getting as close to curving as possible, I just kind of shoot for it, and then I'll trim it down later. But it ended up giving us this cool, like, moon transfer where we can see the moon as we go past, so I end up going with that, because I, well, why not? See both moons in one trip? Heck yeah. So there's the big beautiful moon as we're flying past. Beautiful. Look how happy Megstead is. And then we get to our periapsis, and I slow us down as much as I can. Get us to about a 60 meter uh, periaps, and then I use all my fuel, and we just air brake multiple times. finally slows us down enough to fall back in and we make our descent. I was really worried about this truck during re-entry. I did not give it any heat shields or anything, um, but I was fairly confident that I was going slow enough. This is the one thing I did test. I did throw the truck into an orbit and and send it back down into Kerbin just to make sure that it would be fine. And I'm actually super surprised that it, it was completely okay. There we go. Launching our parachutes out, making our slow descent to Kerbin touchdown. Um, we land in the water, but that's not that big of a deal. The one complaint I have, I have all these graphic mods and they make the water more realistic and boats are practically impossible. So if we ever do any boating, I'm gonna have to turn those mods off. There's a splashdown on Kerbin. Megstead and London Kerman are safe. So we're sending out this thing. <laughs> I don't even know what this thing is. This plane. Plane in air quotes. You can see it has a docking port on the top that's attached to a hinge. Because while I was testing it, I thought that the truck we drove around Minmus had a docking port on the top of it. When in fact, it doesn't. Um, so that will become a problem later. Problem that we, we can solve for sure. Using our brain, we'll figure it out. So quickly flying over this, we landed off the coast of the desert kind of. I mean, it's pretty much on the other side of the world, but uh, launching from the desert airfield was the closest airfield. There, our uh, tail got a little hot and broke off, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's fine. We don't need a tail fin. Oh my gosh, that made me so nervous. We were coming in at 60 meters a second into that water. I thought for sure we were going to kill Jeb and Bill, but they were fine. Miraculously. So there's our truck, and about here is when I noticed the truck did not have a docking port on the top. It had a parachute, so I had to quickly get, uh, I think I got Bill out here to grab this docking port, swim over, get smacked by that wing a few times. Um, so you can, you can swim while holding parts, and you can also climb on them while holding them, which I thought was interesting. So here I'm just casually walking to the heavens. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we grab our dock port, we put it on the back of the truck, and then we hop on back in the plane, and then I forget to spin the other docking port, so I quickly get back out, spin that docking port, pop that bad boy back down.
It only feels like a second for you, but it was probably like 30 minutes for me trying to get these two connected. But uh, through the power of Adobe Premiere Pro, it only takes a few seconds. And then the plan was to hinge this bad boy backward, but it turns out, too heavy. Yeah, I didn't think that would be a problem. I didn't even consider that. So instead of this, of just flying this truck back home, I had to boat it back. So that's what's happening here. I'm just trying to get to any surface I can uh, so we can reconfigure this and think of a new way. Because the only other option, we wanted to fly it, but it wasn't going to fly like this. Obviously, there's too much weight in the front. Um, and I was going to have the weight, obviously, like above the engines. And it was, it was all set and it was going to work, but... Uh, the hinge not working really threw a wrench into the situation. So we get to land using most of our fuel, unfortunately, doing this. We should have had enough fuel to fly back if all everything worked, but, uh, you know, them's the brakes. That's how KSP is. So here we're getting the plane just kind of reconfigured, moving that docking port back onto the back. Move the docking port to the front, as I wanted the weight closer to the front as I could. And then I moved to the plane, I cut that part out because it's not that important. But then we just drive in, it's not tall enough, so quickly get Bill out again to <laughs> Move that docking port in the place where it will connect. So it looks a little ridiculous, and the hinge was still not working. I think, I honestly think it was a problem with mods, unless that's just how it is. Let me know in the comments. My hinge wouldn't work, even with no no weight on it. Um, but the reason I think it was a problem with mods is because there's moments where my my planes brakes like I cannot click on the brake button I'll I'll mention that when it comes up later but I just had a lot of weird issues and at the end of the video a really big issue so I think for the rest of the Eve mission whenever that is finished or whenever I do that um, we're gonna get rid of these graphic mods unfortunately unless someone has any explanation So we run out of fuel in our plane. Uh, so the goal was to drive the truck the rest of the way. There was there was plenty of land, I think. There's plenty of land to uh, or drive the truck back. But then disaster struck. I quickly quick saved and I was trying to see if I could land this plane. And I couldn't. So I reloaded and suddenly it tried to explode every time. So I got in the cheat menu, I turned on the no braking, no crash damage, still just kept destroying itself. I tried to hack gravity, that sent me off into space at crazy speeds. So finally we just we just had to continue because I didn't want to restart the whole mission and uh yeah, so we just had to roll with it. So quickly, I'm panicking, you can tell, because I cannot find where it says deploy shoot. I'm looking all around, finally I find it. Get Meg set safe. London Kerman, oh gosh, deploy your shoot. It didn't want to deploy, but finally last minute to safety. Yeah, relative safely, safety. Quickly get back to Medstead, land her next to London. Um, and the truck is completely destroyed. The plane is completely destroyed. We have no way back. Obviously, that's not good enough. We can't just leave these guys here. We have these two, and then we have Bill and Bob. Look how terrified London Kerman is. He was frozen in fear. So we quickly send another plane out, one with enough room to pick all four of them up and bring them back home safely. Uh, Gambart Kerman driving, driving, flying this bad boy. Luckily, we made it 
pretty far with the other plane, so it's not too far of a flight. Uh, I do quickly land just to revert, or not revert, to uh, change the time because I didn't want to land in the dark. You saw we, we lost one of our winglets, but uh, it's fine. We don't need it. See, my brakes here weren't working, so I had to turn the gear off to stop, and it just still wasn't working, but I... You know, we gotta press on. We have we have kerbals to save. It's more important than brakes. There's our targets. So we're not too far away. So what, we're four hour flight. And part of that was a couple of those hours we're waiting for daytime. So not too bad. But uh, we land kind of far away because our brakes are still not working. The only brakes we have are those air, uh, like the air brakes on the side. Um, so I just landed farther away and rolled in and then just put our gear down as our brake. <laughs> Uh, which seemed to work fine. Didn't didn't break anything. Luckily, everything stayed together. And then we quickly get Megstead in. Well, at first I couldn't get in the so I couldn't get in any of the doors. And then the stock ladder didn't work, so I had to get Megstead over there to like fix it. And then I got them both in. And then we make our way over to Bill and Jebediah, I believe it is, who somehow also survived that horrific accident. So there's Jeb hopping out, very gracefully, I might add. And then Bill, and then making our final flight home with, thank the Kraken, no casualties. Everybody was safe and sound. go back off into the air yeah we were gonna drive this back drive that truck back I was I was willing to do it but uh, the Kraken had other plans unfortunately which means we can't uh, we can't keep that truck in our little museum of our past missions unfortunately but uh, we'll have to put this plane over there as the as the remembrance of what happened poor Meg's dead Meg said needs to be paid more. Whatever we're paying her, it's clearly not enough. She's been through a lot. And we're already back at the desert, flying on in, making a safe landing on the desert airstrip. Luckily, our brakes started to work by then, and we're home. Safe and sound back on Kerbal soil. Um, and here's another weird glitch that we had during the process. I could infinitely just jump in the air. So I decided to take the opportunity to get on this tower. If anyone's ran into these issues, let me know, because I don't know what's causing them. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, do all the things. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.